from Barry. Barry has written, best recovery for pre-season. Good question, Barry, and obviously it's quite a broad one, so I assume you're playing football because that's what we specialise in. So for footballers, best recovery typically will be active recovery because we're doing high training loads during January and February. We want to keep the body moving, so we don't want to be just lying around on the couch. Uh, we want to make sure that your body's staying active and you're feeling good. So going for light walks can be really good. Going for um, maybe a bike ride uh, or yoga, Pilates, any sort of low activity, even a light gym session can do it like an activation-based gym session with some mobility in there can be really good. Massage is another good re recovery in pre-season. What we want to try and limit or avoid during pre-season to maximize our athlete development, all the hard work that you're doing is any cold sort of freezing based uh, therapy. So think ice baths. From Tom, I need to drop five on my skin folds in four weeks time. What should I do? Uh, well, there's lots of things you can do, Tom. To start with, um, I would say make sure that you go hungry on a daily basis. So when I say go hungry, don't starve yourself. We don't want to be malnourished. Obviously, as a footballer, you need to make sure you're fueling yourself to perform at a high level and to reduce the risk of uh, injuries by being fatigued. So make sure we're fueling our body with good food and, and eating healthy. A good rule of thumb is if your grandma doesn't know it, then it's probably not good for you. So, you know, real food, food that comes from the ground, food that um, comes from animal-based source, plant-based source, or, fr you know, fruit uh, is generally pretty safe. And for, in terms of what you want to try and avoid, obviously the big ones are alcohol, sugar, um, anything that's uh, takeaway based or package based. They're going to be usually more processed and not have as much nutrients. From Alex, I just bought a foam roller and a Theragum. When and where should I use it? Um, yeah, great tools to aid the recovery process by promoting blood flow and looking after your muscle tissue health and connective tissue. Um, I would say the best time to use it might be pre-training, particularly on your main sessions of the week, just to get the body feeling good um, going into that session to help you feel primed and ready to go could be a good option, particularly if you're feeling pretty sore and stiff. Uh, the foam roller can help you alleviate some of that soreness or, or tightness. In terms of what areas to use, uh, think of the big muscle groups or the foam rollers. Think your, your lats. Uh, so roll on the side next to your ribs, your upper back through your thoracic, uh, quads, ITB, and your calves. Um, and then for the Theragun, you can get into more specific spots like, like a masseuse would be with their elbow. Um, so maybe your delts, pec minor, uh, into your hip flexors, glute med, those sort of areas. So I run every day. Is this bad? Uh, assuming you play football, I, I would say it's not, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, I love the intent, mate, to get better and, and you're putting in the work. Um, I would just potentially think about the quality of your training without actually looking at your GPS or if you're tracking through your watch, what are, what are the type of sessions you're doing? Um, how sustainable is it? How long have you been running every day? Have you, are you having any um, soft tissue or overload type injuries like Oscan Slatus or, uh, or shin splints, um, uh, but, you know, patellofemoral sort of joint pain? Uh, so if your body's not responding well to it, then that's a sign that it could be bad for you. I typically on our program would have three to four running sessions a week and I, and I would, wouldn't go much more than four times a week for, for anyone. Um, so everyone is a little bit different and there are some outliers to that rule of thumb, but in general, four times a week is plenty. Improving your running efficiency. So if this is something that you're interested in, have someone film the start of a run session from front on side on and rear and then film at the end of the session same thing side on front on and from the rear and what we want to look for look for are these three common mistakes head movement moving side around side to side up and down we want to try and keep a nice still neutral neck head position are uh, your arms crossing um crossways over the body we want to try and be moving nice compact straight up and down uh, and are you having a hip drop um, during initial contact where our hips sagging to the side with a foot that's up in the in the in the ground? So off the ground. So are we are our hips not stable? Are our glutes not strong enough? Um, and are we not running if, if moving efficiently? So if you're seeing the, any of these things, 
to correct it, it starts with body awareness. 